to show you two movies that I want you to watch that we have time to spare. So first, I'm going to introduce a Silver Lining Playbook and Legally Blonde. First of all, let me introduce Silver Lining's Playbook. It was released in 2012 and it has passed $200 million in box office worldwide. The protagonist part became mentally unstable due to his wife's affair. Pet meets Tiffany, who lives in the neighborhood. Pet is at the mercy of Tiffany's extreme statement and erotic behavior. In fact, Tiffany also has lost her husband and has emotional scurling. Tiffany decides to invite Pat to participate in the dance contest. Pat and Tiffany challenge to get the silver lining of their life back again begins. The leads are Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, the directors is David O. Russell. He also directed movies such as Sparking Monkey, Writing with Disaster, Three Kings. Songs future in the movie include My Cherry Amor, Girl from the North Country, and Maria. The second is Regary Blonde. This was released in 2001. In it, a cheerful L enters a top law school to win back the heart of her lover who wants to be a politician. She goes about her goals with her own positive thinking without being biased by the surroundings. It starts Liz with a spoon who also appears in Wild, Hot Pursuit, and For Christmas Seeds. Oh my god, you guys, so much better, and Bend and Snap sang in the play of the three most popular songs. After watching this movie, you will feel encouraged by the way and confront difficulty. And if you like cute things, just looking at it will make you proud to be a woman. It's a movie that makes you happy when you are feeling down. And finally, I'll introduce you our other recommended movies. First, Pretty Woman. A modern day Cinderella story about the love between a businessman and a cold girl. Beverly Hills Cop. A skilled but troubled police officer plays a major role against a drug link. Leon. The film depicts the violent and pure love between a young girl whose, fa whose family has been murdered and a man who's a hitman. Please take a look at these three works. Thank you. I'm going to show you two movies that I want you to watch that we have time to spare. So first, I'm going to introduce a Silver Lining Playbook and Legally Blonde. First of all, let me introduce Silver Lining's Playbook. It was released in 2012 and it has passed $200 million in box office worldwide. The protagonist part became mentally unstable due to his wife's affair. Pat meets Tiffany, who lives in the neighborhood. Pat is at the mercy of Tiffany's extreme statement and erotic behavior. In fact, Tiffany also has lost her husband and has emotional scurling. Tiffany decides to invite Pat to participate in the dance contest. Pat and Tiffany challenge to get the silver running of 
the Your Life Becky game begins. The leads are Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. The director is David O. Russell. He also directed movies such as Sparking Monkey, Fighting with Disaster, Three Kings. Songs feature in the movie include My Cherry Amor, Girl from the North Country, and Maria. The second is Regary Blonde. This was released in 2001. In it, a cheerful elf enters a top law school to win back the heart of her lover who wants to be a politician. She goes about her goals with her own positive thinking without being biased by the surroundings. It starts Liz with a spoon, who also appears in Wild, Hot Pursuit, and For Christmas Seeds. Oh my god, you guys, so much better, and Bend and Snap sunk in the play of the three most popular songs. After watching this movie, you will feel encouraged by the way and confront difficulty. And if you like cute things, just looking at it makes you proud to be a woman. It's a movie that makes you happy when you are feeling down. And finally, I'll introduce you our other recommended movies. First, Pretty Woman. A modern day Cinderella story about the love between a businessman and a cold girl. Beverly Hills Cop, a skilled but troubled police officer, plays a major rule against a drug ring. Leon, the film depicts the violent and pure love between a young girl whose, fi whose family has been murdered and a man who is a hitman. Please take a look at these three works. Thank you. Once upon a time, there was an honest and kind old man and woman. They loved their dog, Shiro, like a son, because they never had a child. And Shiro took kindly to them too. Then, there was the greedy old man and woman next door to them. They hated Shiro. They thought of Shiro as a dirty dog and they usually did malicious things to him. One day, the kind old man went to hide his field with Shiro. Suddenly, Shiro, suddenly Shiro pulled on the kind old man's hand and led him to a big tree in the corner of the field, where Shiro started digging with his paw. Dig here, bow, bow, dig here, bow, bow, said Shiro. What? The kind old man said. The kind old man began to dig. Then he heard a creek sound and found something shiny. So he dug more. Then there were so many gold coins. He was so surprised. He carried them all home. They were rich. As soon as the elderly greedy man next door heard that story, he became envious. He wanted Shiro to find the gold for him too. So he went to borrow Shiro. The honest elderly man was so kind that he lent Shiro to his neighbor. Shiro did not want to go but the greedy old man ignored Shiro's will and took Shiro to the field. He said, 
Gold coins may also be buried in my field. Where is it? He pulled Shiro more strongly and Shiro yelped in pain. The greedy old man thought maybe he would get lucky and gold coin could be there. So he started to dig a hole. But he only found stones and pieces of tile. Despite that, he continued to dig. The hole began to smell bad and something dirty slowly came out. It smelled bad. He shouted and covered his nose. He was so angry that he swung down his hole and hit Shiro. Shiro let out a sad cry and died. The kind old man and woman felt so sad they could do nothing for Shiro. They cried and buried Shiro's body in their ground with care. Instead of a tent, they planted a small pine tree. The kind old man said it is in memory of Shiro. When the tree was grown, he cut down it and made a mortar from it. Shiro liked the rice cake, he said. He put rice into the mortar and they mixed it rhythmically. As they mixed something strange happened. The amount of rice steadily increased and soon the mortar overflowed with rice. In a short time, the kitchen was full of rice. The greedy old woman had been listening nearby again. I also wish to proud some rice and receive treasures like you. Mend your mortar now. The greedy old woman then snatched up the mortar and took it home to make rice cakes with. But no matter how hard she tried, all she got from their mortar were rocks and stones. What a useless mortar you are. The greedy old woman then picked up her axe and split the mortar in two and burned it until all that was left was ash. The old man whose mortar had been burned to ash took the ash home with him in the basket. But a strong wind blew up and sent the ash flying at presently it landed on a dead tree. Then what do you think happened? The dead tree suddenly burst out in full bloom and came back to life. The old man became very cheerful once more. I will make the whole tree bloom again. There you go. The old man then continued to throw ash all over the tree and flowers bloomed in every place. At precisely that time, the lord of local castle was riding by. Wow, this is a remarkable thing. The lord was so pleased with what he saw that he presently showered the old man with gifts of all sorts. But the greedy old man had been watching again. Hey, I will also make the flowers bloom and receive presents for sure. Hand over that ash to me. He then grabbed the ash from the old man and spoke out to the Lord. Lord, this is my ash. I will make this dead tree bloom once more, so please reward me for it. Fly ash. The greedy old man tried to make the flowers bloom, threw all the ash up in the air at one go and straight into the face of the Lord. The ash went straight into the Lord's eye. So his soldiers beat that greedy old man soundly.
Hi everyone! Today we're going to present about Spain cuisine and famous places in Spain. Hola a todas means hi everyone in Spain. Now, let's play a short guessing game. Does anyone know the word for cuisine in Spain? No? It's la comida. How about place? It's a lugar in Spain. Actually, these words are connected to our topic. First, we are going to talk about cuisine in Spain. Have you ever tried some Spanish food? If not, well, this is a good timing because today I will share some Spanish cuisine. Ajillo is also popular in Japan, but oh, okay. it is a standard presence in a Spanish Spanish bar. When you bring it in a heat resistant dish in a boiled state, you can smell the scent of garlic. Add pla plenty of olive oil and shrimp prawns that are not too cooked to the br bread to make the flavor endless. You can find the best ahijo if all the parts of dish such as how to heat the ingredients, the quality of olive oil, the amount garlic and the amount of salt are all matched well. Next is sopa de ajo. They said that the name's impact on the menu is strong because of its flavor. But ajo is Spanish for garlic. It is soup unique to the Castile region, where the cold winter are severe in the inland areas and is also known as castile soup. It started when the first shepherds made bread, garlic and egg that had become hard in Spain. If you think you caught a cold, many people make drink and sopa de ajo with plenty of garlic powder. The modern recipe in flavorful version with jam and serrano and chorizo. As it contains egg, the soup has a gentle finish and is very easy to drink. Lastly, the fulfu la galega. Fulfu a la galega or fulfu a fera is a traditional dish from the region of Galicia. It is the main dish during the patron saint festivities of the city of Lugo. Actually, there are countries in the world that hate octopuses, but in Europe, Spain, Portugal, and Greece, they eat octopus on a daily basis. It is a specialty of the Galician region. The octopus is soaked and has a floppy texture, so it can be cut with a fork. So that's why it tastes good. I think Japanese people also like this kind of taste of food because it's kind of similar to Japanese food. Next, we're going to talk about famous places in Spain. Parker Grill is a work of genius by architect Antonio Gaudi and was registered as a World Heritage Society in 1984. Parque Grill overlooked the city of Barcelona. Parque Grill is a condominium created by Gaudi Dream, built by Count Grill and Gaudi from 1900 to 1940. These are the other attractions of Park Grill, House of Sweets. Grill Park has a management hut and a guard hut, but it looks like a candy house like in Hengel and Gretel. Grey Pavilion was built with the image of Hengel and Gretel candy house, large lizard. The most popular spot in Grill Park is the large lizard on the stair after entering Grill Park. It is the guardian of Guel Fountain and it is no exaggeration to say that is the symbol of Barcelona. This the big lizard has a total length of 2.4 meter. The grand staircase with this large lizard is inspired by Greek mythology. Sagrada Familia Church has not been completed for more than 130 years after the construction started. While still under construction, it is said to be the masterpiece of architect Anthony Gaudi, who was also called a genius and a madman. This time, we will introduce a lot about the Sagrada Familia, which will be completed in 2026. Please refer to the highlight and ticket.
The facade of the palace, which is also the place of the Sagrada Familia in the modern era, is located on the eastern side of the sun and is the first completed place under the direction of Gandhi himself. It is composed of four bell towers, the gate of charity in the center, the gate of faith on the right, and the gate of hope on the left. And as the name implies, the voice of Christ, the joy of being expressed, its stunning decoration is so spectacular that it was declared a World Heritage Site in 2005. The Museum is one of the famous tourist attractions in Madrid and is said to be one of three major museums in the world. There are so many ma masterpieces that even people who are not familiar with paintings can enjoy it. I might have seen this painting in textbook, and those who are familiar with paintings will love it even during the day. The most sought after painters in the Prado Museum are Deira Velasquez, Francisco de Goya, and El Greco. Three people have left, have left many famous work in Spain. The Prado Museum has more than 3,000 work in this place, so the museum is large and has many masterpieces. Here are 5 masterpieces that you should check out of the many masterpieces. These are the paintings that are in Prado Museum. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned it and have fun listening to our presentation. Bye! Today we are talking about what medicine used in El Pirillo and the background of medicine history. So let's find out. In the history of Japan, the 2065-year period between 1663 and 1868 is called the El Pirillo. Look at the man in this picture. His name is Tokugawa Ieyasu. He became the first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate. Edo is the former name for what is now Tokyo. This period of history was given its name because the feudal government at the time was headquartered in Edo, rather than in Kyoto where it was previously located. So first, how did the people become doctor in the Edo period? These days, a doctor must have a doctor license, so people study hard to get one. However, in the Edo period, a doctor didn't have to have a doctor license, so anybody could become a doctor. If they want to become a good doctor, they had to train for 10 to 20 years. Most of the famous doctors of the Edo period came from a family of doctors. Look at the picture. Can you tell who is a doctor? They are the people wearing black clothes. You can see they are doing some treatment that we consider unusual today, including dental care. At the time, there were 2,500 doctors in Japan. Actually, some of them were quacks. Quack doctor couldn't cure serious illness. So, when a patient realized a doctor was a quack, they wouldn't immediately stop coming. Second, talk about Chinese medicine called Kampo in Japanese. Now in Japan, there are over 130 kinds of Kampo used for medical treatment, and the effect is almost the same as before. According to the name, it came from China. Kan means China and Po means way. So these characters represent the way of here in China, so it's named Kampo. Since when has it been used? It was introduced to Japan around 5th and 6th centuries, and it has developed according to the Japanese climate and the physique of the Japanese people. These are examples of Kampo. The left side is called Tokushakyakusan, and the right side is called Ryokeji Skanto. Both are used to promote blood circulation and improve metabolism. The difference between Kampo and Lampo is way of make 
diagnosis and Campo is based on laboratory parameters. These are Campo remedies produced by Tsumura and still used now. Tsumura produced over 100 kinds of Campo and is the most popular company in Japan. There was another kind of medicine practiced in the Edo period called Rampo. Ram means Netherlands. The picture is Dutch doctor visited Edo. It is medicine that came from Netherlands. This became popular as a new kind of medicine. In the Edo period, foreigners could enter only one part of Japan. It was in the southwest of Japan, in Nagasaki Prefecture. It was a small island called Dejima, shown here on the right side of the image. It was a trading post for Dutch ships, whose flags can be seen at the bottom. The Dutch could not leave the island, but they bought books and information into Japan, including about the latest medicine. So Rampo was learned from foreign doctors that came to Dejima. For example, they teach Japanese doctors how to treat broken bones or wounds. Japanese doctor bought book of anatomy from Netherlands. By knowing inside of human's body, Japanese medicine grew up more. Today, medicine in Japan has changed from the Edo period. The history of medicine in Japan continues to influence how it is practiced today. My name is Aya. My name is Edu. My name is Rumika. Today, we're going to talk about purification and protection in Shinto. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about purification and protection in Shinto. First, what's Shinto? Shinto means the way of the gods. It's the indigenous faith of the Japanese people and as old as Japan itself. It remains Japan's major religion alongside Buddhism. Shinto does not have a founder nor does it have sacred scriptures like the sutras or the Bible. Spreading the village of preaching is not common either, because Shinto is deeply rooted in local tradition. Shinto gods are called kami. They can take the various forms, some of them are similar to other religions. For example, the kami shown in the center of this image is Amaterasu, who is the goddess of the sun. However, sometimes natural features such as mountains, trees, waterfalls, or in the case, rock in the ocean are worshipped. Finally, humans can become kami after they die. An important example is Sugawara no Mishisane, who was a scholar in the 80s. After he died, he was made into God a god of learning named Tenjin, whose shrine can be found all over Japan today. Why is purification important in Shinto? Why? Because most Shinto rituals is to keep away the evil spirit by purification, like prayers and offerings to the kami, which means Shinto god. One kind of purification is the jinsai. It is ceremony before building a house to play to protection from the kami. It has been practiced from at least the 7th century and is recorded in the oldest Japanese history book called Nihon Shoki. In the Jishinsai ceremony, the priest says leaves out a kind of prayer called Norito to protect the home and family from disaster. The Norito consists of exp expressions of praise and appreciation appreciation to the kami. In the Jitinsai ceremony, many things are prepared as offering to the kami. This is called Shinsei. There are seven categories of things that are definitely needed. Seasonal foods, fish, vegetables, alcohol, rice, water, and salt. Three or four kinds of fruits and three or kinds of vegetables are needed. 
For the fish, the head and tails of sea bream are used. For alcohol, Japanese sake is the best. Another commonly seen type of purification ceremony is called Oharai Shitogata. Oharai is performed two times annually in June and December. It is a symbolic sacrifice to get rid of the bad things you have done or have happened to you for half a year. How do you use it? There are four steps. First, you write our name on the center and your age under your name. Second, you stroke your body with it, especially any part where there is any injury or disease. Third, you blow on it three times. Then, your, pro your problems will move to it completely. Finally, pass it to the shrine, where it is burned in the Ohara. As it burns, it purifies your body and spirit. People turn to the Shinto ceremonies when they feel uncertain and anxious about the future. And shrines have responded to current events by offering ceremonies related to COVID-19. The interesting things about Shinto is that you do not need to be a believer to visit a shrine or participate in a ceremony. So people of any culture can do it. We hope the information we have shared will help you understand Shinto better if you visit the shrine in Japan someday. Thank you for listening! Bye! Hey guys, I'm Takashi. I'm Rina. I'm Claudia. Today we'd like to introduce you to Mitsuminya Shrine. It's one of the most important religious sites in the Kanto area of Japan. We hope you like it. Mitsuminya Shrine was originally built about 1,900 years ago, and the current shrine buildings are beautifully covered with local carvings. Mitsumine Shrine is in Chichibu City in the mountains of Western Saitama Prefecture. In Chichibu City, there are a lot of shrines, sightseeing spots, activities, and hot springs. Mitsumine Shrine has rare three openings, tori gates and wolf statues as the guardian deity. Mitsumine means three peaks. The name comes from three mountains of Mount Kumotori, Mount Shirayuwa and Myoho Gatake. So, who built the shrine? By legend, it was built by Yamato Takeru no Mikoto. He was sent from the country of Yamato in the west of Japan to conquer the eastern lands. The wolves are guardian gods. They helped guide Yamato Takeru no Mikoto and gather face through fire protection Thieves and disaster prevention. The main deities worshipped at the Mitsumine Shrine are Izanagi no Mikoto and Izanami no Mikoto. They are husband and wife. He made many islands and she gave birth to many other gods. Many of you are probably aware of the famous Ghibli movie. The wolf is a model of Princess Mononoke's Moro. Okami, the Japanese word for great god, is a homonym with a word that means wolf. The cult of the wolf in Japan began in the second century AD. People who lived near Mizumine Shari respect wolf as an emissary from the gods to protect crops from well birth. So at many sharings, the graduates are lion dogs or foxes, but it means many they are wolves. The third and final part of this presentation is about cholera, a deadly bacterial disease that devastated Japan in the 1800s. The symptoms of this virus were severe diarrhea and vomiting. 
it usually resulted in death by dehydration. The virus had several outbreaks, three of which were major. Cholera arrived in Japan for the first time in 1822, and this was the first of the three major outbreaks. It is thought to have traveled from China to the Ryukyu Islands to Kyushu, killing large numbers of people. However, it did not reach Edo, which is now Tokyo during the first outbreak. At that time, cholera had a variety of different names across the country, but it was generally referred to as korori, which means to suddenly collapse or die. However, it finally reached Edo in 1858. This was the second major outbreak of the disease. At that time, Edo was one of the largest cities in the world with a population of 1 million people. The fatalities in Edo were estimated to have reached 30,000. A famous Japanese artist at that time, Utagawa Hiroshige, is thought to have been one of the victims. The image is showing as a guy putting an infected dead body inside the barrel under police supervision. The third and final major outbreak was in 1862. It's believed to have caused the most fatalities of the three major outbreaks in Japan. Fatalities reaching from somewhere 100,000 to 300,000. The image shows a scene with so many coffins that it's impossible to burn them all. It was known that at that time that cholera had arrived from outside of Japan. However, nobody knew how to keep it from spreading. In desperation, people turned to traditional faiths, particularly the wolf faith. Shrines and temples were devoted to wolves, and the faith had many followers. Before the outbreak of cholera, Japan had almost no medical response to an epidemic. Without understanding the cause of the disease, people believed that it was the work of evil spirits. The picture shows a representation of cholera with its head and front legs of a tiger, the chest and the back legs of a wolf, and large testicles of a tanuki or the raccoon. People turned to prayer, putting defensive charms on their doors and staying indoors, or beating drums and ringing bells to scare the sickness away. People also believed that the remains such as the bones and skulls of dead wolves may have been useful talismans in warding off cholera. The demand for such remains was one of the main reasons why the extinction of the Japanese wolves. It's sad and ironic that the popularity of the wolf faith contributed to their extinction. In the last years of the epidemic, from 1868 to 1912, it was known that cholera was often spread through contaminated water and became more active in summer. New specific methods to prevent the disease were made such as not to drink too much water, to dry rooms by ventilation, and not to eat raw or spoiled food. The cholera epidemic increased the awareness of the importance of hygiene in Japan. Even though it's hard to believe that people worshipped wolves just to escape the cholera virus, back then we have to remember that people back they mostly lived by rumors. They stripped to maintain cleanliness, remained indoors, and waited until the epidemic died down. This was all they could do. The COVID-19, we don't know what rumors and certain beliefs encouraged by fear and the panic can make people do. That's why it is important to look back to the past and understand the humans have reacted irrationally during pandemics throughout history. It can help us think about the actions that we take today. Thank you for listening to our presentation.
In this presentation, we are going to talk about Todaiji, the history of the Great Buddha, and the connection between Todaiji and the smallpox epidemic in ancient Japan. So, let's start with Todaiji. Todaiji is a world heritage site and located in Nara Prefecture. It is one of the most impressive temples in Japan. Todaiji was founded in 752. However, it took 26 years to complete construction. Todaiji was commissioned by Emperor Shomu, who was the 46th Emperor of Japan. He devoted huge sum of money to the collection of Buddhist temples. The Daibutsuten, which is a great Buddha hall, is one of the largest wooden structures. It was burned down twice in 1181 and 1567. And the present structure was built in 1709. In front of the hall, there is a large octagonal bronze lantern, which is one of the temple's oldest treasures. It is 15 feet or 5 meters tall. And this is the oldest and tallest bronze lantern in Japan. In the grounds around the main temple, there are extensive gardens and several museums and treasure halls. To the right of the main temple, the Nigatsudo Hall features some fine Buddhist carvings and sweeping views over Nara. Next, we'd like to tell you more about the Great Buddha. The Great Buddha Hall in the main hall of the Dotaiji built first in the Nara period has been destroyed twice by fire in 1180 and again in 1567. The Daibuts is popularly known as Verona Kana Buddha which means sun and light. It is the Buddha whose light of knowledge and compassion illuminates the universe. The seated finger inside is the world's largest bronze image of Buddha. It weighs 550 tons and it almost 50 feet or almost 16 meters tall. On the other side of the Great Buddha statue, there are two slightly smaller statues of Kokuzu Busats and Kongno Busats, the Bodhisattva of Mercy. Many smaller Buddhist statues and models of the former and the current buildings are also on display in the Daibutsuten Hall. La Hotsu here indicates that this is Lulai Buddha. Lulai is the Buddhist deity who has attained enlightenment. Another characteristic of the Great Buddha is the small ball on its forehead, which is called Byakugo. It gives out rays when Great Buddha teaches Buddhism to people. The shape of the hands of a Buddhist statue is called Yin. Buddha demonstrates the wisdom of the universe with his left hand and his warm-hearted mind with his right hand. The right hand of the great Buddha tells us don't be afraid. The left hand tells us I made your wishes come true. Another popular attraction is a pillar with a hole in its base that is the same size as the Daibut's nostril. It is quite small, just 30 times 37 centimeters square. It is said that passing through it successfully will give you good health. The Great Buddha sits on a lotus platform. The flower stands for the pure land made by Buddha to give people peace and happiness. Finally, we are going to explain the connection between smallpox and the Great Buddha. 1,300 years ago, 
Japan had an epidemic of smallpox followed by a huge earthquake and famine. This illness produces a strong fever, skin rash, and leaves the survivors with scars. It is said that the illness was transmitted from the Kingdom of Sila of the Korean Peninsula, then later spread throughout Japan. The epidemic caused upheaval and even killed important people in the government, including four brothers of the powerful Fujiwara clan. The epidemic is thought to have taken the lives of one million people, or about 25% to 35% of the population at that time. Because of the disasters, Emperor Shomu ordered the construction of the Great Buddha to protect the population from illness and for the safety of the land. It can be considered an ancient stimulus project to restore the economy of the country and the power of the emperor at that time. This is the history of Todaiji. It has a dark past filled with suffering and death, but it proves the resilience of people of their time. It teaches us that we can survive even with perilous challenges in life. We are hoping you someday have a chance to visit Todaiji to explore and experience its timeless beauty.